Licenciada en Pedagogía del Centro de Innovación en Enseñanza e Investigación de la Western Illinois University. En el año 2008, profesora invitada para impartir cursos de administración en la Universidad Panamericana en Guadalajara, Jalisco. Ha realizado diversas publicaciones, ha impartido cursos desde el año 2000 en la Western Illinois University en los temas de administración estratégica, administración internacional, toma de decisiones administrativas, administración de carrera, teoría organizacional, administración de operaciones, desarrollo organizacional y recursos humanos. Con el tema aplicación de plataformas virtuales de interacción en proyectos de investigación universitarios internacionales e interinstitucionales, desde la Western Illinois University recibamos con un fuerte aplauso a la doctora Bárbara Rivens. Buenos días, adelante por favor. Good morning. Next. What I'm going to talk to you about this morning is uh, some projects that I've worked on with virtual teams and provide you with some of the background and the uh, experience things that I've learned and to encourage you to get involved. Uh, many U.S. schools would love to partner with Mexican classes and schools to do these sorts of projects. So I'm, I'm hoping that me being here can lay some groundwork and help you understand how important virtual teams are for your students' future and how you can make steps to help them really be prepared for uh, their future. So I want to start with sort of a basic definition of what is a virtual team, because we all know that term, or we've heard that term, but what does it really mean? And then I'm going to use that and develop that into sharing some of my experience and some encouragement for, um, for all of you. The first thing to mention with a virtual team is that you would like to have coworkers with complementary skills. Um, a virtual team is a wonderful thing in the sense that we can look for the best skill sets that fit together and we're not uh, trapped by who is together geographically or organizationally. Um, so this common purpose and goals is very important um, to find people who fit together and will move us toward that. Um, but we also uh, have to recognize that there is a need for accountability. The second thing with a virtual team is that they're geographically and organizationally dispersed. And when we think about examples in businesses of virtual teams, uh, one of the major things we often think about is product development teams that are dispersed around the entire world. Some of you may have read or heard about some of the design teams, particularly in automotive uh, situations where they have uh, workers from all around the world in China and in India, in Europe, in the United States, in South and Central America, all working together on updating and designing new models of cars. Um, this is very freeing for organizations to be able to use these dispersed teams because it really means we can put the best minds together. So think about how we need to prepare our students if they're going to be working with people who are not in the next cubicle or are not just down the hallway, but they are geographically dispersed for them, from them. And then the third aspect of virtual teams is that we're using technology to reach our goal. Um, one of the really important upshots of this is that people really need to have a comfort level with using technology for communication and not just communication on a one-to-one -one basis, but communication within a group. And that becomes really complicated for how do we train our students uh, to get comfortable with technology to that level. Next. So one of the things that I wanted to touch on just a minute are what are some of the pros and cons of virtual teams and um, how we can 
we go to the next slide? How that makes uh, it important for students to have the skills of working in a virtual team. I don't know where my slide person is. Oh, there we go, benefits. Um, one of the big benefits is that it allows us to draw from a big group of people. If we are not conditioned by our organizational constraints, we're not conditioned by geographical or time constraints even, we have a much larger pool of people we can draw from to put together the best people on a particular project. I think that's really important for our students to understand that this is the way business now works because it is inherent in that they have to be best qualified to get these opportunities. How do we help them become best qualified people? And one of the things is to give them experiences in virtual teams and give them the opportunities to develop their skill set so that they have a comfort level and they can rest on their merits. The other piece of that benefit is it minimizes cliques and politics. Um, we all know the political sorts of things that can happen in a workplace and the way that can sometimes interfere with work. If we're working virtually, we transcend some of those day-to-day -day relationship issues, whether you like someone or don't like someone, because we're working on a more uh, content-based level, and yet you still know them, but at a different sort of uh, level. And so it can provide a way to say, I don't have to pick these people because they like each other. I can pick the best people for the job. One of the drawbacks, some of the drawbacks are a loss of social contact. That's the opposite side of that click problem. Um, while we don't have uh, group dynamics interfering, we also lose some of the group connectedness, some of the social capital that can be gained from people who work together well and work together often. There also can be some real feelings of isolation um, that can come when you are working with a team but you never ever see them face to face. It's sometimes hard to understand how you fit into that team. And then the last one here is a lack of trust and I'm going to talk a little bit more about trust in just a few moments. Next. Some of the success factors in virtual teams that are very important for us to understand because we need to prepare our students to play this role and to have these opportunities, it's very important to understand this high level of trust among tr team members. When we're at an arm's length from somebody and we don't have the ability to just stick our head in their cubicle next door and say, hey, get on the ball you know, get going, I need you to get this done. But we have to do it in writing or we have to do it via an email in a long distance sort of thing. It creates some real trust issues, some real challenges when they're not face to face. We need to prepare our students to deal with that. They're used to working in teams, but they're used to working in teams with their peers who are sitting next to them in the classroom day after day or sitting next to them in a study group or in the library. And it's different when there is some distance involved. Another success factor in virtual teams that's very important is an effective use of technology. And I think this is one that we need to teach our students about because we have a tendency to think of our students as all very technological savvy because they're young and they grew up with the internet and they grew up with email and they're growing up with Facebook. And yet that does not mean they know how to use them effectively. They can get in some very bad habits because they've maybe used these for very social things, not necessarily for a professional situation. 